Hello, in today's video we'll be diagnosing a P0455 EVAP system large leak detected, which indicates there's a leak in the EVAP system, which when dealing with any modern fuel vehicle, that fuel which is stored in the fuel tank releases vapors. And to deal with these vapors, car makers have incorporated EVAP systems to manage these gases and direct them into the engine to be burned. But when the vehicle is off and just sitting, these fuel vapors are being stored in a vapor canister, also known as a charcoal canister. So when you got a leak detected in the system, you're looking for just that, a leak somewhere in the system. And the first place you begin is looking for this green cap, which is indicative of the EVAP system test port. And normally this is used to connect a smoke machine. And this machine will put smoke in the line and the system. And you look for the location where that smoke is leaking out from to make finding a leak a lot easier. But in this video, we'll be avoiding using that machine. And I will show you what to look for. So reason I say look for this cap is from here we will want to follow this looking for any potential leak points or damage to hoses. And just next to this we got our vapor canister purge valve which opens on command to allow the engine to burn those fuel vapors. So from this side of our purge valve we got those vapors coming in or waiting here for the valve to open. And once it does open they travel down this hose to be burned through the throttle body. So from this point we want to follow this across the engine looking for any possible leak points. And here it connects to a metal line just above the fuel rail. And we follow that across, which connects to a hose next to this one I'm moving, and back to a metal line which goes to the back. But actually, with any EVAP code, this is the first place you want to look for, the gas cap. But about six months ago, this Honda had a P1456 code, which is also indicative of a leak in the EVAP system, but more so on the tank side of things. And that was an easy fix, because this gas cap had a big tear on the rubber seal. But once you verify that the gasket is in good shape and the gas cap is clicked on as instructed by your gas cap, you can proceed from here by continuing on to checking the rest. Here we got our vapor canister, which collects vapors given off by the fuel in the gas tank, normally located close to the gas tank, in this case just behind it. You'll also want to be inspecting these hoses for any damage or cracks. And this is our vapor canister vent valve which normally remains open, allowing outside air to enter the system. But the computer will close this off, and that is how it detects leaks in the system. And problems here will normally be associated with code P1457. And this valve has this one line which attaches to the tank, the one behind it going into the vapor canister, and the one on top going to the solenoid, which when the computer decides to, it closes it off from the outside air, which that holds with the red writing attaches to the body, collecting outside air. And problems with the vent system are also reasons that you may have problems filling your gas tank because if the vapors have nowhere to go, the fill nozzle will stop or allow the fuel to spray out the filler neck. When testing this with a smoke machine, you will want to command the solenoid to close or if not, you can plug up that vent in or you can just remove it from this spot, removing the two bolts to make it easier access. But for now, we're just inspecting the hoses for any cracks or damage. For now, the one clue I have to go with is that this car has not been running as good as it was before and when the car has a rough idle and an evap code, pretty good chance that it may be related to a problem with this purge valve leaking or stuck open. So I'll be removing this to test it off the car. But for this video, I'll skip the detailed removal since I'm suspecting this piece is bad. And I'll leave the process for the next video. And if I'm wrong, why show it anyways? And here we got the vapor canister purge valve off the car. And as I mentioned earlier, this valve is closed and should seal the engine vacuum off one side from the vapors on the other side till the computer sends a signal to open. And this valve does show an arrow showing the direction that the vapors travel while the arrow is pointing to the side with the vacuum which is pulling the vapors through. Now to test this purge valve, I'll be using this vacuum pump and this will basically act like the engine pulling the vacuum on the valve. And a good valve with this test will hold the vacuum and a bad valve will allow the vacuum to drop basically meaning that the valve is causing a vacuum leak and being the reason that the engine will run rough and possibly harder to start. Now to connect the vacuum pump to this valve. You'll want to make sure that you're connecting the hose to the side that's attached to the throttle body. And with the pump, I want to pull about 17 in vacuum, which is what a car at idle normally pulls. And a good valve will hold this for minutes, but as you can see, this valve is allowing it to leak out, and thus being the reason for the check engine light code. So with that we can confirm that this vapor canister purge valve is bad and will need to be replaced. 
So next week I should have the video of the removal and the replacement of this valve. And I'll link it at the top or in the description or at the end of the video. But there are other ways that this valve can fail and I'll show you the other ways to test this valve. And for this I'll be using a 9 volt battery to open and close this valve to test its operation. Because another way this valve can fail is by being stuck closed and not allowing vapors into the throttle body to be burned. I'll also be using small leads with alligator clamps to connect the battery to the valve. Connecting one lead to one terminal and the other lead to the other terminal. And you also want to make sure that they don't contact each other. With those leads connected, you can pull vacuum on the pump or you can wait to connect the red lead. So now we connect the red colored clamp to the battery positive. And now for the black clamp. The moment we connect the negative on the battery, it should open the valve, releasing all the vacuum if operating normally. So based on that test, we know that the valve opens properly as it should. Finally, we got one final test we could perform, which is a resistance test on the resistance of the coil in the solenoid. And this test can help us detect if it has an open circuit or short circuit in the valve. And we we'll want the reading to fall within 20 to 60 ohms. First thing we want to do is set our meter to measure resistance. On some meters you have to set the range manually, but this one is auto ranging, so it finds its own range. So to test the resistance, all we do is connect and hold one lead to one terminal and do the same with the other lead and hold it without touching each other. So based on this reading, we fall within our 20 to 60 ohm range. So the valve would be good in that aspect, but in our case, this valve has to be replaced nevertheless. Well that just about does it for this video. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If so, please click that thumbs up button to support my video and my channel. And please subscribe if you haven't done so.